Hey guys, Alec here from GPI Lab, and today we're gonna to be going over the DTF or direct-to-film curing process, as well as some of the key features of some of the equipment used. If you're interested in the DTF process, any of the equipment we have, or just scaling your garment printing business, this is a video for you, so stick around. You may or may not already know, but DTF printing refers to the process of printing a water-based ink onto a film for transfer onto a garment. Then a TPU powder or thermoplastic polyurethane is applied to the printed area, then melted to become a polymer layer that then adheres your print to your garment. So there are a few different ways to go about the DTF process. Some are more automated than others. Today we'll be covering the STS 24 inch shaker dryer. STS's shaker dryer definitely has some key features to help separate it from some other options in the market. Some clever technology helps automate the process, translating to major savings in time and money. You won't have to sit around and babysit the machine. And some of these features are just purpose built to reduce waste of consumable materials as much as possible. What is a shaker dryer? A shaker dryer is going to apply TPU powder to the backs of your prints, pass them under a heating element, and re-roll them onto a core for easy organization when you're ready to press them to a garment. With a piece of equipment like this, you'll be saving yourself the time and effort that comes with manually powdering, curing, and organizing your transfers. From the integrated TPU scale to the media sensor in the front, some features here are really gonna help you avoid some costly waste of materials and even errors like head strikes. I'm really excited to take you guys on a deep dive of some of these capabilities. So let's take a look at some of the features. First, I just wanna cover what it took to get the 24 inch shaker in our space here. It does have a significant footprint at about 69 inches in length, 43 in width, and 40 in height, and it weighs about 745 pounds. The 24 inch version needs a dedicated 30 amp, 220 volt single phase circuit. And once we got in the space here, we just had to set the foot pegs down with some cogs that are on the wheels and set it in place. There's also a 44 inch shaker for use with wide format setups. But for those of you who may not have the space to get the 44 inch nor the 24 inch in, we also have a 13 inch automatic shaker dryer option. It just runs on a standard 120 volt, 15 amp circuit. And it has all the same features, just in a smaller footprint of about 34 by 26 by 24 inches, weighing about 120 pounds. The control panel is the first key feature that stands out on this machine. Now you'll find it right here on the side. Compared with the manual knob controls on most of the machines in the market, the LCD touchscreen is gonna make your life a lot easier. In terms of controls, you have a simple on and off button. You have an emergency stop button, which is an important safety feature. And in your control panel, you'll be able to find temperature and scale values, as well as on off buttons for each individual function, automatic and manual mode, heat, fan, dusting, shaking, feed and roll. While using the machine, you're usually gonna be in automatic mode with the exception of beginning a job and the very end of a job. Another key feature of STS's shakers is the media sensor right in front here. As you print, slack is created on the section of media that reaches from the printer to the shaker dryer. Once the media is low enough to trigger the sensor, the shaker dryer will know there's enough printed media to cure, so you'll be able to paste the machine to the speed of your printer, avoiding issues like head strikes, which can be costly. It's features like this that allow the STS shaker dryer to be used with any other roll-to-roll -roll DTF printer on the market without having to babysit the machine for the entire process. Next, we have the dusting assembly and the TPU scale. The interaction between these components is gonna be an important part of avoiding any waste or malfunctions during the process. You wanna make sure that your TPU hopper is filled, considering as your prints pull TPU powder out of that scale, it'll refer to the scale value to determine whether or not more TPU needs to be deposited. When ran in automatic mode, the machine will stop feeding media through if the scale value reads any less than 70 to prevent prints getting pulled through without TPU powder. Once the scale reads any lower than 70, That'll prompt the dusting assembly to start depositing TPU onto your media and into the scale, which will allow the machine to continue feeding media through the heating element. Next feature we'll cover is the beater bar and the recycler drawer. As media is pulled through your TPU scale with powder applying to your prints, the beater bar in here will shake off any excess TPU powder to ensure you have an even layer. Any excess TPU powder that's shaken off will accumulate down here in the recycler drawer to minimize any loss of consumables. The vacuum cylinder here is gonna create suction so that you can 
Hold the media here while you're setting up a job and it'll roll to feed the media through the heating element once you're on your way. With enough TPU in the scale and a length of media printed, the vacuum cylinder will begin to feed media through. So the media is held down by suction from the same blower that operates the vacuum cylinder to avoid the media buckling and making contact with your heating elements while it passes over a Teflon mesh that helps evenly distribute heat. At around 90 degrees Celsius, these quartz infrared bulbs are going to melt the TPU powder on the backs of your prints and that'll form a solid layer that becomes the adhesive when transferring to a garment. Meanwhile, any vapors that are released during the curing process are all going to be filtered through this HVAC system here. In this compartment, you'll take out a few screws to find your certified HEPA and charcoal filters. It's worth mentioning the only maintenance that'll need to be done is going to be to make sure that these gutters around the heating element don't fill up with glycerin condensation that's released during the curing process. And depending on the use of the machine, how often you use it in your printing area, you'll need to replace these filters about every six months to a year. So once your prints have passed through the heating element, they'll come down the back of the machine here and they'll pass under the dancer bar. You can attach them to the uptake assembly so they can roll onto a cardboard core. Your dancer bar down here is another safeguard against waste and malfunction. The uptake unit will basically reference that tension on the dancer bar to determine whether or not there's enough printed media to be rolled onto your core. Another key feature of STS shakers is gonna be the vacuum table in the back here. This will prevent uncured prints from slipping all the way through at the end of a run, so you won't have to accommodate for that at the end of the process. If you're looking to scale your garment printing business, if you're looking into any of the equipment or DTF process in general, or if you have any other questions, be sure to visit our website at garmentprintering.com or our YouTube channel. We have a ton of new informational content on the way, so be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things garment printing.